Namaste and welcome to Flutter Appright tutorial series episode 7. In this episode, we are finally going to learn to query our database. So in the first tutorial when we set up our app right if you remember we have set up a transactions collection so in this episode we are going to query the transactions collection and display the list of transactions in our mobile app but before that there are few changes that i made with the transaction collection so if you go in the transaction collection i already have few sample data so if you want to enter the sample data you can do by pressing this plus uh, floating action button here but before that I have changed a few things here so if you remember we set up transaction date created at and updated at as the text field but here I have updated them as numeric field so why updated as numeric field because instead of storing date as text which is which will, will have a problem while converting from date to a string. So instead of that, what I am doing is I'll be saving the dates as milliseconds since epoch. So uh, in Flutter, date time in a date time value, we can get milliseconds since epoch, which gives us a integer value. So we can save that in this. So that is what I have changed. And in documents, I have added few test documents. So if you want to add those documents, just tap the plus button and title, let's say, add a title, optional description. So so user ID is required. So you can get the user ID from the list of users here. If you go to list of users, and let's say test user you can use any of your user copy the user id use the user id here and transaction type one and two one is maybe one is expense and two is income we can set it like that and amount let's say 500 Transaction date, I'll just use a random date here, which will not give us the proper date, but that's fine. Okay. And created at, again, I'll give the random date. You can try to get a date, date time now dot milliseconds since epoch from Flutter and enter the date time here. However, just I'm just putting the random date here. And in permissions, you need to add read access to user user id so if you do not add this permission you will not be able to read this data while querying from mobile application so we have added new document if you go to transactions list you can see this buying If you go to transactions, you can see this buying food for baby listed here. So add a few test documents so that we have something to query in our mobile application. Once you are done with that, let's get started with the mobile application. So in the mobile application, first inside the features folder, let's create a new folder called transactions so we'll have a new folder called transactions that is our transactions feature and inside this folder let's create again two folders data and presentation inside data let's create another folder called notify sorry inside presentation let's create another folder called notifiers and again another folder called widgets and inside data let's create a folder called model and inside model let's create a file called transaction dot dot 
this will be our transaction model that will convert our transaction JSON into a transaction object and inside notifiers let's create transaction state dot dot this will be our transaction state and inside widgets let's create transaction list dot dot so first I'll make the model so for the model I've just ready it I'll just copy the model so that you can see it here so I have a class transaction that has ID collection permissions title so permission is again of type permission I'll show it below title description user ID transaction type amount transaction date is date time created at updated at date time so I was having some trouble with double value because the values were stored as integer in app write numbers so for now we'll use integer for amounts but later when app write is updated in 0.7 version they will probably fix these problems so amount and we have a constructor with all this value and the important is this from JSON so from JSON is what converts our JSON data which is a map of a string dynamic into our transaction object so we get a JSON and we use these lines to convert these JSONs into our transaction object and you can see here for transaction date created at and updated at I'm using date time dot from milliseconds since epoch because we are storing it as milliseconds in the database and to JSON later on when we want to create new trans add new transactions to database we would like to convert transaction object into JSON this is what is done by this to JSON function so here we are using dollar which needs to be skipped and below you can see the permission permission will have two paths read permissions and write permissions so these are required so while creating new data if we do not provide permissions we will not be able to access our own data for now we are just reading so that's fine you can get this code in the github repository linked in the description below you can check out the part 7 branch of the repository to get this completed code okay we now have the transaction model next what we want is transaction state so in the transaction state first we'll create a class which extends change notifier for that you need to import widgets or material next we need a collection ID of the transactions collection we can get that from here transactions so if we go to database transactions and settings we have the collection ID here so copy this collection ID and paste it here next we need a client this client is from AppRite if you see AppRite is imported here database DB this is also from AppRite this is to so the error we are just making a getter for the error so let's make a constructor and in constructor let's call init and in init set in point App constant starting point set project dot project ID dot 
database is a new instance of database we are we did this back in authentication state as well for now we are just repeating it but later on we will make a common client and db so that we can use it on the other states as well so now we need a function to get a list of transactions from our database so future list of transactions so it should return a list of transactions this is a asynchronous function let me import this transaction okay now let's just try catch So if we have an error, we'll just return null for now. And to get a list of transactions, what we do is response res is equals to db dot list documents collection ID is we have the collection ID above. So we'll just call this function. So if the status code is equals to 200, that means we successfully get the transaction. We return the list of transaction and we get that in res data documents dot map we get the transaction tr transaction data from json so what we are doing here is in our response data we get a map and in that map we get our documents in the documents key and we are checking the each elements of these documents and we are converting that json data into transaction object so this way this will return the list of transactions else we'll just return return null so this is how simply we can get a list of documents from any collection in app right now let's create a transaction list wizard where we will display these list of transactions for now i'm keeping everything simple so let's create a stateless widget transaction list let me import material okay and instead of container what we'll use here is future builder so our future will be provider of type transaction state dot transactions initial data let's remove this let's keep it null and if snapshot dot has data otherwise so return circular progress indicator if it has data so list of transaction transactions is equal to snapshot dot data okay and finally we'll use list view dot builder item count will be transactions dot length next item builder will return in item builder transaction equals to transactions index and we'll return a list style 
title will be text transaction dot title in the subtitle we like to display the transaction date so subtitle text so to display the transaction date we'd like to format it properly and for that we will be using the intel package intel package so here add intel which is at 0 0.1 6 point one version so after adding the intel package yeah, pop get should run automatically and you should be able to use it so in subtitle date format dot y m m m e d dot format transaction dot transaction date and leading we like to use the icon and that should be deferred based on the transaction type so icon transaction dot transaction type equals equals one then we'd like to use icons dot wallet else list so if type one it is income we'd like to show wallet icon if type 2 it's expense so we'd like to show a list icon so that we can distinguish whether it is income or expense just by looking at the icons finally in the trailing we like to show the amount text transaction dot amount dot to string so our list of transaction is ready we require semicolon here remove comma save and in home page home dot dart in home page instead of single child scroll view we need to add transaction list okay and finally in providers dot dart in our core providers folder core notifier providers here we'd like to add our transaction instead change notifier provider create context transaction state so we have provided our transaction state we have our home page with transaction list we have everything ready now it's time to run our application i have my emulator already open so let me run our application once the application runs we should be able to view the list of transactions that the user currently logged in user has permission to read if you are not logged in you can just log in with the user that we created in the previous episodes of our tutorial so once the application runs and once you log in you should be able to view the list of transactions so all of the transactions here are of transaction type one so we are getting all as wallet so let me change this so let's go to transactions list of documents let me change one of this fruit to transaction type 2 and let me update and let me hot restart okay once i hot restart i should see one of them as expense so this is how easy it is to list any documents from the collections in upright in the next episode we'll continue on we'll complete the crude operations so that we can add new view the details etc thank you everyone for watching this tutorial see you in the next episode